first eight month of a decline. Okay, there you are. So, uh, and uh, minus four, I don't think they've seen in a very, very long time, not even during uh, the post Lehman crisis when uh, crude prices had dipped to $30. Even at that time, we did not see anything as bad as minus 4.05. That is a, a measure of the amount of, uh, you know, steel prices perhaps uh, that have collapsed. Uh, other uh, metals as well, uh, crude. So all those will be getting reflected in these prices. Uh, this is a fairly serious uh, fall that we are seeing, but uh, not able to get uh, details just yet. Uh, is there anything more that you can read in terms of uh, mm, uh, No, Lata, the this is, I think, about all we have right now. So it should be the ninth consecutive month of a decline coming in at minus 4.05%. And remember the range itself of all the uh, uh, economists who had been polled by CNBC TV18 was just between minus 2.3 to minus 3.46. I don't think there'll be anyone on the street who is not taken aback by these numbers. Mm, yeah, oh, absolutely. I think let's get some initial comments. Uh, uh, we have Aditi Nair, uh, uh, the economist from Ikra, joining us and in a bit some others as well. Uh, Aditi, uh, uh, your first thoughts. Uh, I, uh, give me the permission to interrupt you as soon as the PIB obliges with the press release. But uh, your first thoughts? Certainly a surprise, Lata. Uh, we will have to see how much of this is really coming in from uh, the global uh, terms of trade shock in terms of uh, the fall in commodity prices, particularly the plunge in crude, which is of course continued in August as well. So we do expect some of these disinflationary tendencies to strengthen and uh, deepen in uh, the current month. And then how much of uh, this uh, fall has really come in on the food side? Mm. Uh, so food, uh, we've already seen, as you mentioned, uh, the CPI right, has given I us think some I will news. Be, uh, I think I'll, I'll have to interrupt you because we're getting more numbers now. Uh, incidentally, the uh, June inflation has also been revised lower, though. Uh, it's minus 2.2 and not minus 2.4, as we were initially told. So that perhaps is a blessing. One hopes this even minus 4 will look less uh, deflationary as and when the final numbers come, maybe a minus 3.5. But uh, uh, here's uh, the final uh, data. Uh, food inflation has come in at, oh, that's also lower. Month on month, it has fallen by minus 0.6. Year on year, it's a fall of minus 1.2, 1.16 to be precise. Uh, so primary articles as a whole is minus 3.6 uh, down year on year. And uh, food itself is uh, year on year a fall. I, I can't remember when we last saw this year on year fall of minus 1.6. The biggest culprit actually is potato prices, which year on year has fallen by 50%. Uh, vegetable prices as a whole year on year have fallen by 24%. But I'll tell you the month on month falls, that's also vegetables. And we saw that in the CPI basket. In the CPI basket month on month, we had seen a 7% contraction in vegetable prices. Uh, now we see a half a percent contraction in the WPI. Fruits also have fallen month on month by 4.5% year on year as well by 4.5%. Egg, meat and fish. Eggs, I mean people were telling us in June itself that the latter half of June had seen the egg prices beginning to soften. Egg, meat and fish have fallen by 6.6% month on month and the year on year rise is just 2.5%. I mean we have to concentrate on egg, meat and fish, fruit and vegetable because these are the protein components which have co consistently been rising. We have been able to control cereal inflation for the better part of last 15 months but uh, the protein elements especially pulses were being a little resistant pulses are still up 35 percent year on year and 1.3 percent year on year that is yet to be contained and we saw that in the cpi as well that showed a 22 percent rise year on year so those problems remain but barring pulses uh, this is a picture of reigning in inflation cereals have never ne have not been the problem for the longest time that year on year has fallen one and a half percent that's important because it's four percent of the entire basket cereals cannot be taken lightly uh, pulses is 0.7 percent of the basket but it is the one that is still resistant uh, the other uh, components vegetables for instance uh, uh, i told you have fallen month on month and even year on year have fallen very sharply 24 percent milk meat egg fish are also fairly reasonably under control on year on year terms now for the other entrance, uh, uh, entries in the WPI, fuel and power are down about 13% year on year. Fuel and power are also down month on month by 2%. Largely, of course, it's uh, diesel prices which have been cut uh, consistently. 
Manufactured products is the uh, story that we will be worried about. Uh, month on month, manufactured products have fallen by 0.3%. That's not good. You know, just a brief interlude. Why would a manufacturer want to produce something if at the end of the production, the price is going, uh, the price he's going to get is even less? You know, it uh, 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 kind of uh, uh, is a deterrent to uh, increase in production. A mild inflation is what a manufacturer would like. But this month on month is a fall of uh, my 0.3, and year on year, the, uh, the manufactured products index has fallen by 1.47%. This is a little different from the core inflation because manufactured products has some food products as well, like refined sugar, refined edible oils, which are manufactured items. I'll give you the core number in a bit uh, as soon as it starts flashing on the wires or one of our sources mail it to us. But uh, within uh, the manufactured products, just about everything has fallen month on month. The food items, sugar has fallen 4% month on month, edible oils has fallen quarter percent month on month but this pales in comparison to the falls we are seeing in uh, the manufactured goods man-made textiles has fallen 0.6 percent month on month and year on year it is down two and a half percent let's come to the steel items uh, ions and semis are down uh, 0.3 uh, percent 0.4 actually 0.37 0.4 percent month on month they are down ten and a half percent year on year Likewise, metal products as well are flat, actually, 0.1% higher, and year on year, it's a fall of 6%. Uh, uh, that's where really it hurts most. Uh, chemicals, fortunately, are up 0.4%. I would wonder how rubber products did. It says 03 up, but year on year, it is a fall of 0.8. Year on year, every manufactured item is cheaper, practically, except paper. So that's uh, uh, the, uh, the list. A huge fall in food prices has led to this uh, shockingly low WPI, but it's not as if manufactured uh, products have been uh, spared. It is overall as well a minus 1.47% uh, fall, 1.5% fall. And I think with that, the manufactured products are also seeing deflation for the fourth or the fifth consecutive month, I think from March. That's March, April, May. Uh, uh, March, April, May, June, July. Now this is the fifth month that manufactured products are in exactly deflation territory. Uh, this looks serious. I doubt if these numbers can be taken very lightly by the central bank, even though they don't look at the WPI. Rupa again, it's today the chief economist at LT Finance is also with us. Rupa, I've told you all the possible numbers. What's your comment? Uh, see, Lata, I honestly feel that uh, WPI is a better indicator of uh, what's happening in the real sector than IIP because uh, this whole uh, deflationary tendencies uh, that WPI has been consistently showing is primarily a reflection, as you said, of course, of uh, a substantial decline in global commodity prices, but also a significant weakening of aggregate demand. And whatever uh, story has been communicated to us by, uh, say, PMI or core industrial production or, uh, you know, uh, the demand coming from uh, power uh, generation companies mm. or passenger vehicle sales, all that is getting substantiated by today's number. Mm. And we have to take it as a very, uh, you know, significant indicator of serious weakness in aggregate demand level. Yes, uh, point taken. Uh, we have to pull up the bank nifty. Uh, it had actually, to be fair, risen by 11 o'clock itself uh, to its current 1.5, uh, 1.6 percent highs. But uh, the bank nifty is now standing probably at the highest point of the day, up about 1.7 uh, percent. Uh, clearly, people are factoring in that some kind of help may come uh, 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 the way of banks in the form of uh, an interest rate cut. But the entire market, to be fair, is at uh, the day's highs. 1.3% higher. So the lower inflation number is being greeted uh, con uh, in a convoluted manner with actually higher prices. Uh, uh, normally, it should be a, a sign of weakness in the economy and it should have been greeted by some kind of downtick in prices. But clearly, people are factoring in that policy action will come on the back of these uh, uh, rather shocking uh, WPI numbers. And that's why you're seeing actually the WPI, the uh, bank nifty game, as well as the Sensex and the nifty. Uh, Aditi, I'm sorry I had to cut you off. Your first thoughts? 
So definitely, Lata. I mean, as far as uh, you know, the food space is concerned, I think other than pulses and onions, everything else looks to be very much uh, in control. Uh, you know, bad monsoon uh, notwithstanding. So that is a relief overall because uh, unlike the WPI, at least as far as the CPI is concerned, uh, food does uh, form almost half of the basket. Uh, coming back to the core side, uh, I do agree with you that uh, and uh, Rupa that of course uh, there is some amount of uh, uh, aggregate demand uh, uh, weakness that uh, is bringing these uh, numbers down. But at the same time, I do think that a fair bit of uh, uh, the disinflation is coming in from global trends. I mean, you know, core inflation as we calculate it even includes uh, the prices of gold ornaments and things like that actually adjust very very quickly to uh, the changes in uh, global prices so uh, you know particularly for things like uh, gold and jewelry we do see a price resetting happening on a daily basis so uh, I wouldn't uh, be as alarmed uh, about okay. uh, the state of uh, uh, aggregate demand as uh, what the core inflation uh, uh, number is suggesting mm. but of course taken along with all the other high frequency indicators I mean certain Certainly, it isn't a very pleasant picture that is emerging. Uh, we have seen a lot of uh, downticks on many of the high-frequency indicators over the last couple of months. So, uh, definitely, uh, economic recovery is uh, not as strong as uh, what we would want it to be. Mm. And uh, heading, of course, uh, towards the end of this month when we get the GDP number, I think uh, these are sobering uh, factors that we need to uh, take into account. Well, uh, I, I have heard enough uh, reports from Nomura, from JP Morgan as well, reiterating your point of view that shorn of the food and fuel elements actually uh, uh, core core inflation is still rising at five percent or thereabouts and or in fact uh, I think it's being put uh, closer to five and a half percent five point two five point three therefore there is that uh, uh, you know sustained level of inflation which the Reserve Bank will have to worry about especially if it is targeting five percent inflation for FI 17 and 4% for FI18. But that said, this 4% uh, uh, wholesale price index inflation is clearly a worry for the industrial space, for the manufacturing space, to get people to produce and have some pricing power. Uh, Vivek Rajpal of Nomura is joining us on the phone line. Vivek, uh, uh, what do these numbers indicate to you? The bond yields have given away uh, a little more, now stand at 7.73. Uh, are they factoring in a rate cut? Uh, even sooner than uh, September the 29th? Um, I think uh, uh, at current levels, I don't think uh, markets are really pricing in cuts. Uh, because if you really assume that we will get a cut, then um, the policy rate goes to 7%. And then 73 basis point uh, of spread between 10-year bond and policy rate looks too high to assume that it is pricing in cuts. Um, uh, having said that, uh, I mean, uh, of course, today's WPI reinforces uh, what the CPI told us, that the odds have clearly risen towards the next cut, and uh, therefore bond markets are responding in the current fashion. Uh, having said that, I think there are uh, uncertainty in the global environment, which we cannot take our eyes off. Uh, there is this China mini devaluation that has happened. Uh, which is uh, putting pressure uh, in the Asian region on the various uh, currencies. Uh, though India is definitely uh, much more resilient. Uh, at the same point of time, uh, uh, we cannot uh, take our eyes off uh, the possibility of Fed tightening. So yes, the odds have definitely risen as far as the next uh, cut is concerned. Uh, uh, but I think uh, given the various uncertainties, uh, it should still be uh, closer to uh, the next, uh, the possibility is still uh, closer to uh, the next policy meeting rather than a uh, little too early. All right. Uh, Rupa, same question to you. Uh, what are you expecting by way of policy action? When? How much? Uh, well, uh, today's data as well as, uh, uh, you know, CPI uh, certainly have uh, uh, strengthened the case for a rate cut in the third quarter. Uh, but, you know, I don't think uh, Reserve Bank uh, will uh, move out of its cautious zone because uh, they will uh, wait for, um, uh, you know, the actual uh, impact of waning of statistical base, how uh, it uh, pans out. That is one thing. And secondly, uh, as I have been always telling you, 
in this show. Uh, I'm not sure how much a rate cut is going to really help the real sector activity because we know uh, the constraints to monetary transmission and uh, you know the way uh, stretched assets uh, portfolio of the banks uh, has been swelling. Uh, but yes, it will have some beneficial impact on sentiment and bond markets. But uh, I'm not so sure uh, whether it will be enough uh, to uh, kickstart or give any uh, momentum to the real sector activity. Uh, Aditi, uh, your take on the next policy action? So I agree that uh, rate cut alone isn't going to be sufficient to really kickstart uh, activity, particularly in the sectors that already have a lot of structural issues like power. Having said that, uh, our view is that there will be another 25 basis points cut or rather that there is room for another 25 basis points uh, cut in the repo rate in uh, 2015. And uh, I would place the highest odds of that happening um, uh, for the next uh, policy action uh, mm. rather than uh, pre-policy because that okay. will give the RBI time to see one more round of uh, inflation uh, reading. Okay, okay. Uh, out of time, but I just want to ask both of you uh, one more question. When does uh, uh, the deflationary trend stop? Uh, will it run its entire course of one year and it's only a base which is going to bring it back to positive terrain probably November? Uh, sorry, Rupa? Uh, no, I'm not so confident about it because uh, on the ground channel checks uh, suggest that, uh, you know, uh, the core industrial activity has uh, weakened quite significantly. And if you even look at the uh, performance of monsoon so far, uh, well, uh, you know, food prices is not the only indication, but, uh, you know, going by the IMD's forecast for the month of August and September, you know, um, I'm a bit worried about even the agro-based industries and uh, their production. So I'm not so sure that November onwards we can confidently say uh, that uh, there will be a reversal in this trend. Okay. Aditi, when do you see it uh, taking a U-turn? So I thought it would be November before I saw today's uh, uh, deep disinflation. I'll have to rework it. Uh, mm. You know, given the kind of uh, commodity price uh, falls we've seen in the last couple of weeks, maybe we need to push it ahead to uh, either uh, December or maybe even oh. January. But that would be one certainly full year. until uh, October, November. Okay, one yeah. full year of deflation for sure. And here's more deflation for all three of you. The core sector number has, the core WPI has come in at minus 4.1%. So that's uh, a widening of uh, the deflation. 1.4. Yeah, minus 1.4. Yeah. Did I say it differently? Okay. <laughs> said 4.4. Oh, sorry, <laughs> minus 1.4%. It was minus 1.1 in the previous month in June. July, it has expanded to minus 1.4%. Uh, so that is a deep uh, deflation that's running in the core sector as well. Vivek, where are the yields headed this month, this quarter? So, um, as we get closer and closer to September 30, I think yields will uh, move down gradually. Uh, I think we should, uh, in the old 10-year benchmark, we should see uh, yields closer to 770, which should be equivalent to 750, 760 zone in the new 10-year benchmark. We should see that relatively soon. Oh, in exactly. the in okay, a uh, seven and a half in the 10-year. Uh, uh, yeah, that at least would uh, see the bond, uh, bond yields correcting to the kind of inflation levels we have. Rupa, Aditi, Vivek, thank you very much uh, for joining me with your analysis of the WPI numbers. Uh, it was a shocker of a number. I can't remember if I have ever reported this kind of a WPI in my reporting time, and that is what two decades now. So minus uh, 4.05, that's the wholesale price index. Over to you. All right, uh, Lada, for the market as well, uh, we're virtually at the highs, uh, 84.70 on the Nifty now. We came close to 84.90 earlier on in the session. From there, we've come off a tad, but nevertheless, the market is holding up with smart gains across, uh, the, uh, across the board. The mid-cap index, too, about a percent and a half higher. And look at the bank Nifty, virtually at the highs, 1.7% higher on that one. Even the CNX PSU Bank, of course, has lost more news flow uh, through in the banking space. So that, too, at the highs. And look at some of the stocks which are gaining ground at this 